First off, let's talk about E3. So now E3, the uh, what is it, the Electronics Entertainment Expo, um, was coming back this year. It's first physical event in four years, but we're finding out the big three will not be there. No Nintendo, no Xbox, no Sony at E3 this year. Now, so PlayStation, they stepped down in 2019. They stopped going. They did a separate event. So that wasn't a shocker. Um, Nintendo, they usually have a direct that they do. It's, it's part of E3, but they never have like a, um, you know, they're not in the hall showing off stuff. And But they always have a presence on the show floor. No longer. They're not there this year. Um, and then Xbox, they decided they're just going to do their summer showcase that they've done previously. And um, they will not. All, they also won't have a presence at the actual E3 uh, event. So what I'm hearing that, so Nintendo's is based on, you know, it's the end of the Switch cycle. Not a lot of big games coming out. And they're like, okay, so, you know, why are we, why are we going? That's fine, you know. Um, PlayStation, like I said, they do their own thing. They've done their own thing. They fell out with um, E3 and the and the um, the board that runs E3 in 2019. So that's fine. Xbox was a big surprise. They actually had um, Phil Spencer said this about the event. E3 is just to me one of the seminal moments of gaming. I love the history of going down to LA. Thousands of people there getting to see great new things, getting to see people in the industry, the fans, the events we've had. I definitely want that to continue. Xbox is on the board of the ESA, and I think a successful and healthy ESA is critical to what we're trying to do. So we place our showcase like we always have done at a time where hopefully it's convenient for press and even consumers that are going to the E3 event. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do now. We will continue to work with ESA in terms of their plans. As I said, we're on the board and we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to make the E3 successful. So it kind of just seems like they're just doing their own thing. It's going to be at the same time as E3 so that all the journalists and stuff down there can still, you know, go to their event. But they just are doing it separate from E3, which I don't know. It seems strange to me, especially if the other two aren't going to be there. You're the focus. They're on the board, like you said. I don't know. It seemed weird. But. Right, yeah. I, I don't know why this isn't a uh, why not both situation. I mean, it's it's one thing mm -hmm. to have your own um, your own event so you can get that on stage part on your own terms, take as much time as you want, and you control the narrative. But to have a presence on the floor seems like a worthwhile investment, especially like I understand the whole they're, like we're at the end of the Switch cycle, not a lot coming up for Nintendo. But when it comes to Sony... We have the PlayStation VR 2. We have their new adaptive controllers. This is stuff that should be on the floor in front of people uh, so people can get some hands-on. Like, I think, didn't you say you, you tried a demo of the first one and that's the reason you bought it? Absolutely. Yep. Yep, I agree. And, like, I think they do. I forget what their, their event is called whenever they do have them. They haven't had one in, in a long time, like, since COVID and that sort of thing. PlayStation. They used to have their PlayStation... I don't know what they were called, but they would have, yeah, they would have like a showcase and people could come try stuff. So maybe they'll do something like that outside of E3. I don't know what their issue was with the ESA, the board, something where they're like, all right, F you, I'm out. So, but yeah, it was definitely the Xbox one. It was very surprising, especially since like, you know, we got Starfield and like these big games coming out and they're just like, okay they're not going to be there they're going to do their own thing so yeah i don't know i don't know what this means for e3 there was um so here's another quote i want to read so esa the the board that runs e3 they hired reed pop now they're known for doing their um doing events they do packs uh comic con like they do all these big events and they do a really good job of organizing them and making sure everything's um you know what everybody wants so they put out a statement um regarding e3 and it is this e3 is such a significant event for the game industry and being entrusted with an important cultural touchstone is not a responsibility Repop takes lightly since Repop took on the contract to run e3 six months ago We've worked diligently with ESA members based on their feedback to create a new type of E3 that supports their goals and needs. 
This process has taken time due to the tremendous amount of stakeholders offering input, though we appreciate that we could have been more transparent to questions for which we were still finalizing the answers. We continue to work tirelessly to create a show that brings together the global gaming industry. We believe we've created a new format for the event that serves the needs of both the industry and its fans and are committed to building and growing it in the coming years. As we spent much of 2022 refining how E3 2023 would take shape, reflecting on the feedback we solicited, we did not send a single contract to an exhibitor until the start of this month. We have received a tremendous amount of interest and verbal commitments from many of the biggest companies in the industry. And when we are ready to announce the exhibitors, we are confident it will be a lineup that will make the trip to Los Angeles well worth it for the industry and consumers alike. So, um, yeah, so they're saying that everything's, uh, you know, everything's good to go. And, um, you know, it's going to be an event still worth checking out. Now, of course, they're organizing it. They're going to say that. But um, on this IGN article, someone said um, it was a, a source close to, to E3. They said that um, this is not entirely true. They said their um, – the quote is, there's not a good sense that there's an understanding what this show is going to be or how it will come together, which is strange from a company that does such an amazing job with packs twice a year. It seemed like they'd be the perfect shepherds for something like E3. So who knows where the issue is? Is it an ESA issue? Is it a read pop issue? But there seems to be a lot of genuine interest from game publishers in the concept of E3, but it's really frustrating that we don't have good solutions. So um, they said the information flow hasn't been great. That and that the that the announcement announcement that they were like just now reaching out to people um, is not like true. They're like, who's going to be at this event? That's like not that far away. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I always look forward to E3 every year, man. And um, it doesn't change. I, I mean, there's still going to be lots of big announcements. You know, I'm sure we'll still get announcements from from the big three. They just won't be there, yeah. which is fine because I'm not going to be there either. So, Yeah, I mean, the industry is big enough that, that they probably don't even need to be there for this to be a huge event. Yeah, so um, we've talked about it in the past about how these type of events, like, are they, are they dead, you know, in a post-COVID world where everything is digital and we, we – Everything was fine digital during those times. We, we got a lot more information and still continue to do so. Is there a need for these big, um, you know, events? So, I don't know. From, from a publishing standpoint inside the world of video games where, you know, it's it's a trade event for them. You know, you're meeting people. You're talking games and, and showcasing stuff. That's still, you know, a big part of E3. As far as the announcement side, our side, the press side, digital is, you know, it's the way to go. We, okay. You know, you don't need to be there to get the information. The hands-on stuff, that's nice. Everybody loves going and playing the game, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know, but we'll see. June um, 13th through 16th will be E3, and we're going to talk all about it, I'm sure, uh, from now up until that date. And then even long after it. So keep it locked. Keep it locked on. How does that work? If you're on, you just never leave our YouTube yes. channel. Is that how yes. it works? Just keep it please. here. Play it on. Play our all videos on repeat. Yeah. Play the, the yeah. playlist so that we get all the views, please. I think that's a good